Today we have three pairs of genuine LEGO sets versus their off-brown counterparts and they will be compared head to head to see who does it better. But wait, we are 14 subscribers away from 1,000. Hit that damn red button, man. Just hit it. <laughs> Round one, we have LEGO 60262 against Goody's 8913. For the stats, we have LEGO 60262 coming in with 669 parts and a retail price of $100. Goody's 8913 comes with 856 parts, and depending where you buy it from, prices may vary, but cheapest I have seen is as low as 25 bucks. All figures are in USD, by the way. So straight away, we can already tell value for money, it's not even close. You're paying a quarter of a price and getting almost 30% more parts. But does this mean Goody has compromised quality to achieve this high value for money? Starting off with the aeroplanes, both aircrafts feature a half cargo, half passenger design, with Goody opting for a white and red color scheme. The plane is massive by the way, over 2 feet long, and is one of the largest aeroplanes that is commercially available right now. Unfortunately, the base design is not amazing. Whilst everything is about it is about okay, engine, landing gears, colours, Goody tried to be different with how they designed their windows, and this completely backfired. If you look closely, what they did was, they put a window, then a stud, then a window, and another stud. On the outside, this takes away from that large passenger aeroplane aesthetics and makes the plane look basic. On the inside, we get a decent cockpit, but unfortunately, they left a lot of space occupied, which is a bit disappointing. Back there, we have very simple six seats and a galley. The cargo compartment is big enough to fit a good amount of stuff, and they even include a few pallets as well to be transported in. A nice touch. A forklift is also included, which actually goes along with this set very well, and a control tower again, a great addition. LEGO aeroplanes do not disappoint, and this is a great example of it. They opted for a different design here, with a new nose, new engines, and varied color scheme. And I absolutely love it. A new design curve, and I think it looks amazing. Inside, we have the best cockpit ever in a LEGO aeroplane. Detailing is off the rail here. The main cabin unfortunately only has four passenger seats and one for the cabin crew. Disappointing to say the least. Moving back, we get kind of an awkward space here, not really serving a specific purpose. We get an area to store carry-on bags, a housing for the drink cart, as well as a very cramped bathroom. The sink is actually behind the toilet. The cargo compartment is also very big. They include this little car which itself is nothing amazing, but they designed the set around transporting the car. We get this little vehicle here which loads the car onto the aeroplane. The set also comes with an airport, which itself is way too small. It is about the size of a bus stop. All in all, LEGO's aeroplane is miles ahead of Goody's aeroplane. Goody definitely tops LEGO in terms of accessories. I have to give this round to Goody though. Ultimately, they're pretty close, but because of a massive price difference, the point has to go to Goody. But let me know in the comment section below which one you think is better. Round 2 we have LEGO set 60228 against Goody's 8816. For the stats, set 60228 comes with 837 pieces with a retail price of $100. 8816 comes with 703 parts but undercuts LEGO by a lot coming in at only 20 bucks. LEGO's rocket is designed very thoughtfully. We have this bold confident design with some great detailing. It's 46cm tall which is about a foot and a half. Some great features added to these rockets are very impressive. The cockpit, while it is kind of basic and not much going on right here, but as we move down, this rocket is actually modular. And there are three sections to it, which is very clever. You can store cargo in this fuel, and this set even comes with this little solar station, which is specifically designed to fit into one of these compartments. It's up to you basically what you want in there. The launch pad is also very clever. They include some fueling accessories, and when the rocket takes off, it retracts, which is some next level designing right there. This set also comes with a cool little station that houses all the computers and scientists and, and equipment associated with this rocket. The design of this is really cool and a great addition to the set. We also get a neat little train here that connects the set all together. A nice touch. For Goody's rocket, we get a really overwhelming design. There is a ton going on here and it's packed with little features and detail. The rocket is about the same length as LEGO's, it isn't modular unfortunately and leaves a lot to be desired, especially seeing what great things LEGO did with their rocket. The launch pad is massive, and with that crane on top it's kinda designed to build the rocket, not launch it. But the amount of stuff packed in here is very impressive. We get some gas canisters, tubing, tools, and even a countdown timer. 
The accessories that come with this set aren't that great and they're really just too simple in design and lack detail and functionality and don't really add anything great to the set. I don't know about you guys but I have to give this round to LEGO. The design is amazing, it's thought out really well and overall I'm very impressed. Even with a substantial price difference, LEGO is taking the crown here. So the final decider round and we have possibly the most popular theme in LEGO ever, Police. LEGO 60141 comes with 894 parts with a retail price of $100. And Lighten 1918 comes with 918 parts and a retail price of about 40 bucks. LEGO's police station is clean and I'm putting an emphasis on that clean. We get a functional design that is well laid out and comes with many of these features you would expect in a police station. This is designed as a corner unit with an L-shaped layout. We get a tiny little garage, but while it would fit the vehicle included, if you had a bigger, larger police station, if you had a bigger, larger police car at home, it's going to be a tight squeeze. On top of that is a watchtower. Good amount of detailing for a LEGO City set with a lights, multiple color scheme, as well as the various attachments. Next to that, we get the main building, which houses the offices. Exterior is clean and interior is well detailed with cool little features. And on top of that is a helipad. Now, the jail cells look rather ordinary, right? But no, this set comes with a cool little plot where these crooks are trying to bust out this guy out of jail. In fact, the jail cell is designed to eject the front fall off mimicking the, these crooks blowing it up with dynamite and using their pickup truck to get away. But luckily for the police, they have this high speed performance car to chase them. It's a pretty cool aggressive design and it's six studs wide so I'm definitely a fan of that. And also a helicopter, which is in the normal LEGO City style which is just okay. The Enlightened set unfortunately is not as well designed. I'm not sure if that's a colour issue or they meant to have their police station look like that, but that dark bluish colour scheme just does not work at all. I think if they were trying to stand out from LEGO, they should have just gone for a black colour scheme altogether. But anyways, the overall police station is pretty good and comes with some dope features as well. It is laid out completely straight, which does make it look a bit bland and smaller compared to the L corner design that LEGO has. So furthest to the right is a checkpoint, which then moves on to, I guess, the secondary building. But that's why I think if a minifigure was to enter the station, he or she would have gone through there. But then we have this primary building which has the offices and they try to center it but it is a little strange how they managed to achieve that. We don't get that same interior detailing that LEGO has, it just includes some ordinary offices which is a bit disappointing. Next to that is a jail cell which like the LEGO one is designed to eject following the same boss out of jail theme but isn't done nearly as well as LEGO. And under that is a shooting range where cops can practice but don't you find it a bit odd that it's directly under the jail cell? Now the coolest feature of all is this police station is actually a two-in-one which transforms into this massive police truck. And the winner is... Lego. Overall, whilst it is more expensive and provides much less value, we get a far better design set that is of much better quality. LEGO also retains its value, so if you change your mind later on, you can always sell it for, in some cases, more than what you paid for the set originally. Comment down below who do you think won, or in other words, do you think the massive price difference is really worth the nicer design and better brick quality? Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Road to 1K was so close. Hit that red subscribe button. We're also expecting some new 2022 LEGO leaks very soon. And when they become available and we get images of those, I'll be making a video covering that as soon as I can. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.